Okay, welcome. Today we are going to look at uh, the first chapter of the first unit, and what we'll be talking about is the evolution and history of psychology. So, this is a uh, kind of like an overview of the course in in a big way. Like, where has psychology been? How did it start? And um, where is it going in the future? Um, this is a brief in introduction. A lot of times I'll do this presentation just in class. So you definitely may see this done in class and there are some things we do in this presentation uh, in class that I won't do here just for the video clip. But um, psychology itself, what is it? That's what we're going to discuss here. Have you ever wondered about some things and, and thought to yourself about life, about people in general? Um, some things like why do I like the people, the food, and the music that I like? Um, Mr. Duez loves a whole lot of different kinds of food, for sure. But <clears throat> I love spicy food. Why do I love spicy food? My wife doesn't like spicy food. My son does love spicy food. I like rock music all kinds of different music but I really love rock music why do I love rock music so much and and uh, somebody else may not um, or on the opposite end of the spectrum like why do I not like certain things or have an irrational fear of things like for me I have a pretty irrational fear of heights and this was even before I have had the problems that I have today with MS with multiple sclerosis it is um, it kind of lends itself sometimes to bring on other neurological conditions or situations where you'll feel uh, a little bit strange uh, in crowds. And there are some people that are certainly scared uh, and don't like to go in public places that are very crowded. But too much stimulation will to kind of drive me crazy. But I've always been afraid of heights. And as I jokingly refer to it, probably more afraid of falling to my death than afraid of heights. But you get the picture. Why do I feel a sudden boost of energy or my mood can change when I listen to a song on the radio? And then another one that just happened to me today, I was at the dog park, I was walking my dog and I was uh, suddenly not feeling very well. I had a pretty good headache. It's like I've been having these headaches lately. I need to get my new uh, prescriptions in, from my new glasses in. My prescription uh, is just about done, and I think I'll get them tomorrow. But I've been having some eye strain with that. So I thought, oh, man, i got another headache coming on. And one of the guys that's there all the time noticed. He said, are you going to be all right? And I said, yeah. And I sat down, talked to him, and talked to some other people for a few minutes. Ten, fifteen minutes later, I felt better. Whatever the conversation was, whatever they were talking about, for some reason, uh, they got my mind off things, and I felt a lot better. Uh, music can definitely do that. It can change your mood quite often. Uh, why did I cheat on the, the test, on the test that uh, you took? Well, I don't cheat on tests because, seriously, I've always had, like, major issue with that. Like, if I try to cheat on a test, my hands will get sweaty, I'll get real dizzy, I'll feel strange and odd, and I'll kind of start flipping out. Other people don't have a problem with that at all. They can cheat and justify it and it's not a problem to them but I have cheated on diets I haven't cheated on a boyfriend or girlfriend that's not gonna happen not with Mrs. Duez um, how about why do I get so tired or maybe bored at a certain class or maybe even a certain period of time of the day I know when I was in school for me about 10 10 30 that was probably my te my peak part of the day. I, w I would be probably more um, open to what the teacher was saying, definitely going to be listening better and communicating better with my classmates. But maybe it's a certain set of personalities in a class. Maybe it's a subject, or there could be all kinds of different things. We'll discuss circadian rhythms as we go through the year. So circadian rhythms is the rhythm of the day, and as you go through... Your day, certain hormone, or certain certain hormone levels, and other things can can rise and fall and cause you some some difficulty. But of course, 
in psychology class. I'm not going to have that problem at all, are, you? are we? Not at all. Have you ever wondered about some other things? Um, are you like your father? You know, let's take your son to work day right there. Um, maybe your father was a conflicted individual who had uh, dark side moments. Um, but you're not like that. You're a good guy. Yet there are some things that your dad did um, or does that you can sort of relate to. Um, maybe it's dreams. You had a dream and you thought, oh, what's, what's, that, uh, what's that dream about? Um, hopefully not about someone dying. And handwriting. Is it really true that, like, if you sign your D with a big loop at the top like this, like I sometimes do, that I'd be sensitive to criticism? Interesting. Um, are firstborn children more driven to achieve? How about only children or maybe a middle child? Is there a kind of predisposed way that the development of families would be impacted to say, well, you were the firstborn you're going to be more successful in life. I was firstborn, and I don't know if I'm more successful than my sister. I guess it depends on how you want to look at things. Uh, my son, though, is an only born child, and only child we're going to have. You see Mr. Gillespie right there, you know, hosing down Aiden. I'm going to have a coffee with him in a couple minutes here. Uh, but Mr. Gillespie has two kids. If he had a third kid, um, this one right here would be right smack in the middle of those kids is that going to be a different childhood for him compared to the other two and what's your experience been there's the handwriting thing does it offer clues to my personality do dreams mean anything and this is I think probably a really common psychological thing that people think of and consider uh, you wake up from a dream and you start to analyze it and try to figure out what it means how about hypnosis? Does it really work? We're going to study this this year. Can you put somebody in a hypnotic trance? What does that do to somebody? What is it really? And we're talking about levels of consciousness there with dreams and hypnosis. Why my family or my relationships look so dysfunctional at times and what to do about it. If you think your family is crazy, you're probably right. <laughs> If you think you're the only one with a crazy family, you are wrong. Because most people have, you know, people are people. And they go through different periods of time uh, where things are going well or not going well for them. And things can seem pretty crazy sometimes. Especially Thanksgiving. So that's supposed to be a kind of a fun dinner. But Thanksgiving and Christmas can be pretty, pretty wild. So what is your definition of psychology? What do you think it means to study psychology? What are you going into this with? What kind of an idea do you think this is going to be? Go ahead and write it down in your notes here. Write the word psychology. Write your definition next to it. Pause the video and then come back to it in a second. And we'll discuss more about this. So go ahead and pause it right now. Okay. You've written out your definition of what psychology is. Certainly some classes do this a little bit better than others, but typically most students don't get this right on the money, not the first time. Um, we've got a little cartoon here, which I sometimes like in the notes. This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. You can see the zipper down here, down the front of the sheep's clothing or the sheep's costume. Um, and the person who is counseling with the wolf in sheep's clothing um, is listening and the wolf says paradoxic isn't it this feels real and my life before seems like the masquerade so if you feel like a wolf in sheep's clothing that means that you feel like you're kind of an imposter you don't maybe belong he's feeling like he start, is starting to belong in the situation that he's in which is not being an imposter let's look at the uh, the roots of psychology psyche is the soul logos which is ology the ology part is referring to the study of a subject and so if you put those two things together we're looking at the study of the mind but that's not the only thing but it certainly is at the root of what psychology is it's the uh, foundation being in the world of physiology 
and philosophy. So physiology meaning how is your body put together? Let's just look at the brain. Uh, what does the brain look like? What areas of the brain do certain things? That's physiology, biology, neuroscience we'll talk about. Philosophy means what's your idea of how the world works and and uh, you put those two things together you get psychology. This brief video clip, I'm not going to play it here in the notes, but you can certainly play it within the presentation that I've embedded on the website, is from an introduction to uh, psychology from the Annenberg website. This is Discovering Psychology with Dr. Uh, Philip Zimbardo, and he is quite an interesting character. We'll see a lot of him this year, and probably see a good bit of this first one in class. Let's discuss the engine of psychology. What makes psychology or what makes the study of psychology move? And you, when you think about engines, where do you think the engine uh, of the car usually is? It's under the hood. But what, where is the hood that you would open up and see the engine of psychology? To me, it's definitely in the brain and in the mind. But is the mind and the body, are they separate things? Or are they one thing together? Do they function together? That's one of the questions we'll be looking at as we go along here. I'm going to do a quick experiment here. I'm going to skip through it because this is something I like to do in class. Um, and don't want us to do that right now. Let's go back here to the rest of this, which is big issues in psychology. And like I said about the last slide, we'll probably not do this uh, for a homework assignment this video clip, but rather do this one in class, but you can if you miss class You can catch up and watch this later The uh, the man pictured there at the top corner right next to my face Let's See if I can do this right There we go I don't look anything like Wayne Wheaton, but that's the author that wrote your textbook psychology themes and variations we have an edition that's a little older this year, so these are three of the other editions. I'll be supplementing this book with quite a lot of other materials because we're uh, kind of years behind the science with the textbook that we have. Yet I think the textbook's essential, and it's a good textbook. I mean, it's, it's going to give you a great foundation of what you need to do well in the class. But stability versus change is one of those big topics. Rationality versus irrationality is a big issue in psychology. And then, of course, nature versus nurture. And we're going to look at some of these as we flip through here. Let's look at stability and change. Shows up there in the, the cartoon at the top. Penguins are black and white. Some old television programs are black and white. Therefore, penguins are old television programs. The caption says, logic, another thing penguins aren't good at. Penguins are good at hockey, though. Well, I have you know that, but that's some of Penguins fan. At the bottom, you've got these stormtroopers trying to get a dog to jump through a hoop. Stability versus change. Can you teach uh, an old dog new tricks? Maybe these weren't the dogs you were looking for, stormtroopers. Um, do we change over time in distinct and universal stages, or do we basically remain the same drooling, slobbing, simple beings of our, of our beginning? I think for certain there is some change throughout life. The wisdom gained with living makes you a different person, certainly. And those things that happen to you impact you. But are there, are there a certain uh, core uh, sense of who you are that doesn't change over the years? Do, do these things change, like personality traits and sense of humor and tastes, uh, th uh, things that you enjoy and like? Can a shy person as a teenager become a very outward going as a uh, person as an adult? Um, why are some adults just big kids? You probably have some teachers like that. They're, they're just uh, kids at heart. Maybe that's me. Uh, do personalities change in different situations? Maybe you're at home, you have a certain personality, you come to school, completely different personality. You're with one group of friends, you're kind of one way. You're out with a different group of friends, you're a totally different way. Certainly, there's a little bit of change within these different um, ways we're looking at life, but is there a stability that runs through it as well? How about the idea of rationality versus irrationality? Are we wise or not? Or are we you know, not as smart as we think we are? 
Why do we do bad things uh, when we know they're bad? Why am I going to go have coffee with um, Gillespie here in a few minutes and I'm sitting here drinking a cup of coffee? I drink too much coffee. It's not good for me. Why do we do that? I'm not sure. Why is my tea not connected to my don't? <laughs> I don't know that either. i got to fix that. We screw up. We make mistakes, and we lose sight of good judgment from time to time. Certainly teenagers will do this more than not. But we often don't change behavior that we don't seem, that doesn't seem irrational. We often uh, don't change behavior if it doesn't seem irrational. And this is a book by Dan O'Reilly, uh, bestseller, a New York Times bestseller, about the unexpected benefits of defying logic at work and at home. <coughs> Nature and nurture, it's one of the first things we'll study in Unit 1 with an article we'll, we'll look at. Are you born the way you are? And I guess that's the Lady Gaga reference. Or were your surroundings what made you who you are? Is it your genes or your experience? Your biology or the things that have happened to you that have helped to, helped to shape you? It's interesting that I think we're going to come to an understanding that it's really both working in tandem in maybe a surprising way. And I won't get too much into that today, but can you think of it and consider it yourself? I mean, you're a junior or senior in high school. Do you believe that you think the way that you do because of how your parents are or the friends that you have or the situations you've been in? Would you be a much different person if you grew up, say, in China or England or France or Pittsburgh instead of Houston? Um, or is it the biology, the genes that have been passed along to you uh, from your parents and your DNA that have really kept you uh, essentially the same? wouldn't matter where you grew up. You'd still probably think and, and do the same types of things. A really good example of nature versus nurture in maybe a fun sense, is the movie Mega Man. And in this movie, and I'll show the clip here to you in a second, the baby uh, at the top and the baby at the bottom are released like Superman uh, off Krypton and uh, capsules headed for Earth at the same time as their planet was being destroyed. One lands in a prison yard, one lands down the chimney on Christmas Eve of this couple who's always wanted a baby. And they raise him and treat him right. And the baby who landed in the prison yard raised maybe and treated not so well. The story is really about breaking out of that nature. Is it in your nature to be bad? Or can I break out of that and be something else? Is my nature actually better than the nurturing situations that maybe went wrong for me? So pretty good movie. I'll come back and insert that clip here. Um, also, there's two video clips here that are great. Shawhorn, who does a great job with his video clips on uh, psychology. This is for AP Psych, but really it's what is AP Psych and how is it different from psychology. And then this clip, Famous People in Psychology, good for both courses, will give you a quick rundown of who these people are. So those two will be in the notes here for you to watch, and you can pull them up. And we'll probably see some of that in class as well. So that's been the first set of notes here. Uh, for the first chapter, this first unit, we're going to be combining chapter one, chapter two, which is research methods. Chapter one is the evolution of psychology, which we'll get into more detail with in the next video. And we'll also look at chapter 12, which is personality. Uh, so we'll study Freud and some of those guys, and we'll look at see what the personality of people is like and how that functions. One of the reasons we're doing that here is it really fits in well as we're looking at the evolution of psychology and psychology today. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a great one. Don't forget to be awesome.